only child, and my cousin Megan is the closest thing I have to a sister. We like to pretend we really are sisters. And in January, she was due to give birth to her first baby via C-section on a Monday. I just had to be there. I got an airplane flight to LA to arrive on Sunday to see her have her baby on Monday. I arrived on Sunday, and good news! The baby moved. We don't have to have a C-section anymore. <laughs> so I now have three days to wait for a natural birth before I have to come back to New York. No problem. Monday, we go to the zoo. Busman's holiday. We look around the zoo. Tuesday, I make everyone lasagna. Tuesday night, I go to bed and I'm feeling a little sorry for myself worrying about missing the baby and this wonderful opportunity to be with my cousin. About 4.30 in the morning, the phone rings, and I hear my aunt. What's that? Oh, oh, contractions? Oh, what should she do? Asks my aunt, mother of three, to me, mother of none. <laughs> How far apart are they? How far apart? Five minutes! Five minutes! Five minutes! Ah, uh, yeah! super excited. <laughs> so we thought we would go to the hospital and meet Megan and her husband John. One problem, Uncle Gary has taken this moment to go for a bike ride, 4.30 in the morning, <laughs> in LA. It's okay, we'll take showers, we'll get bags ready, we do, and he's still not back. Clearly he's chosen this moment to practice for the Tour de France. And uh, my aunt runs out into the middle of the street. Coo, 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 coo. This is her family lost in a crowd noise. Coo, 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 coo. Still, no Gary. Then the garage door opens. Gary's back. Gary, we're having a baby. Now everyone on the street knows someone's having a baby. Then we get Gary into the car. We get to the hospital. 6.30 in the morning. I have six and a half hours before I have to go. Oh. We get in to see my cousin and her husband, and you can tell that the contractions are really hurting her. And so they decide to give her an epidural. It takes them two hours. And we wait. And my cousin's husband comes in, and John looks scared and nervous. They're going to have to do the C-section after all. The baby is just too big. But don't worry. Go for a walk. Come back. So we do. We walk around Santa Monica. I see a drug deal. We go to a farmer's <laughs> market. We buy cupcakes in the hopes of celebrating. It's 11 o'clock, two hours before I have to go. And on the way back to the hospital, my phone rings. It's the airline. Apparently in January, there was a big snowstorm in New York. <laughs> my flight is canceled, which is the best news ever. The operation to have the baby is at noon. At 1.15, we receive this text. Baby Ford is here. Nine pounds, three ounces, 21 inches long. Jesus Christ. Everyone is well. We laugh, we cry, we call everyone we can think of. And at 2 o'clock, we get to go in and see the baby for the first time. He's super soft. Fate's a funny thing. If I had gone on that airplane flight and there hadn't been a storm, I would have missed seeing the baby by two hours. When I got in to see baby Ford, Megan held him up to me and I got to touch him and she said, Ford wanted to see you. He made the snowstorm happen. <laughs> and we both cried. Thank you.